and tons of congratulations because it's a virtue because you right. accomplish something you're not yeah. using drugs yeah whereas in other cultures that would not be the case people would just say oh you've decided not to work with a, a certain medicine that's an interesting choice not an accomplishment who was it saying was it kyle kingsbury that was saying that how much he hates the term plant medicine or was it dennis i think it was kyle uh you don't like the term plant medicine do you I don't you well do you buy, there's a it's a weird sort of pretentious yes yes I know what well, people call ayahuasca the medicine or yeah, things like that yeah or toad medicine. medicine I mean I wouldn't you don't hate it I a lot of these like more flowery terms like entheogen I just don't use them myself but I don't hate it well you're you know I think people like you are very important and I'm a big fan uh, but I think one of the reasons why you're important is you are a cognoscente of real drugs like you you understand what they actually do you could explain them to the layman or you could debate them with someone who was a doctor perhaps that wanted to you know to talk about the dangers of them and you understand all the various aspects of it and i think there's a tremendous amount of ignorance when it comes to drugs drug consumption what is a drug i mean how many times have you seen a person with a beer in their hand smoking a cigarette saying they don't do drugs <laughs> It is so fucking stupid, but it's it's so common. There's this very, very, very common aspect of being a person, which is this desire to change your mental state. And we've done it throughout history with various substances. But uh, there's so much stigma attached to it. And, and one of the things I've been doing lately uh, on stage, I'll ask people, how many people get piss tested at work? It's fucking stunning. It's stunning. It's like more than 10% of the audience will raise their hand. Like one out of 10 people gets oh, their, yeah. their body tested to make sure that while they're not working there, they're not putting anything in their body that's prohibited. Which is such a horrible invasion of privacy that, you know, that became so popular that in the 80s during one presidential election, all the candidates voluntarily had their urine tested to prove <laughs> that they were sober. I mean, this is like truly considered a virtue. And... It's immensely invasive. I say this as someone who's analyzed my own urine in a laboratory before, and it's like a strange portal into your own life that you're yeah. showing to a stranger. Everything that you've consumed is then apparent there. Yeah. And it's incredibly, it's a huge invasion of privacy that we've just decided is acceptable. And you have to be very careful about these things. Yeah. No, I agree. Um, it's And, of course, the synthetic cannabinoid epidemic, if you want to call it that, I actually don't want to call it that because I hate even the idea of a drug epidemic, but the, the popularity of synthetic cannabinoids is largely driven by the fact that they didn't show up on these urine tests. So initially it was in the military, then it was people who were on parole or probation, people who were living hard lives, wanted to get high, couldn't get high. This was a way that they could do it. And so they've incentivized people that just wanted to smoke weed using completely untested synthetic cannabinoids instead as a direct result of these urine tests. <sighs> well, it's also just a complete misunderstanding when it comes to the actual effects and how long they last. You're, you're not even testing a person's co conscious state. You're testing whether or not a person has altered their state of consciousness outside of their their working time you know it's not like you show up and they could scan your hand and realize that you're high on marijuana right now it's not what they're doing what they're doing is they're they're testing you for something that could linger in your body for weeks after these psychoactive effects have long since gone oh yeah or even be the result of passive exposure there was a great scientific article that came out a couple of years ago where they found that just passive exposure to cannabis smoke contaminates your hair with thc so that all these people who had hair tests who actually had not smoked cannabis but it sounds like an excuse i was just in the room someone right. else was doing it just being in contact with someone who'd smoked cannabis could then deposit thc in your hair and cause you to test positive so these tests aren't even necessarily reliable this is the same problem there was a, a kind of trend a little while ago i don't know if you saw about this where people would uh, get their urine tested for different to quantify the levels of neurotransmitter metabolites in their urine and this was supposed to be like a fingerprint of your mood so they'd quantify the level of serotonin dopamine gaba whatever 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 and then they'd say oh you're a little low on serotonin you're pretty depressed actually you need to supplement with some 5-htp or something like that it's a very reductive way of thinking about consciousness but the main issue is that you're not testing in your brain you're testing your urine and a lot of these neurotransmitters are biosynthesized in the periphery so just because you have these neurotransmitters in your urine doesn't mean they were ever in your brain. It doesn't say anything about anything. It's 
so it's just it's so juvenile in a way it's just such a it's it's such a piss poor way of maintaining order checking people's consciousness and make I mean, what you should do is judge people based on their productivity if if i have some guy and he shows up for work and he kicks ass every day i'm like dude what's your secret he's like i get high get high before work it's great i feel good having a good time at work zippity doo dah zippity day i'm putting everything in order and it just feels good I'm like keep doing what you're doing <laughs> i mean that's how it should be we we should be judged based on whether or not whatever we're doing is uh, i mean i guess the real caveat to that would be people that do speed oh yeah i mean you would get pretty productive for a short period of time doing speed but i think the downside of that there's so many people that are on Adderall today, right? Oh, what, yeah. what, are, what are your feelings on that? I think that it's a very interesting issue because it's amazing when you look at the history of all these things, how these issues repeat themselves over right. and over and over again. So it was a problem in the 50s, and it's a problem in the 60s, and it's a problem in the 70s. Now it's a problem now. It's always a problem that we're treating as if it were a new thing. But people have been using amphetamine-type stimulants for the better part of 100 years. And... Um, People will now, the kind of popular thing to say is, you know, didn't you know Adderall is one carbon atom away from meth? But here's the flip side. Meth is one carbon away from Adderall. So this whole idea that meth, again, back to pharmacological determinism, that meth is a drug that turns you into a toothless, insane, white trash uh, guy who's stabbing the walls with a cleaver looking for people that are hiding and whispering secret messages or something like that. Like, this is just a stereotype that we have created. Of course, there are people like that, but the reality is that these stimulants have an ambiguous potential for all sorts of things. Some people use low doses of methamphetamine. In fact, methamphetamine is scheduled to because to this day it can be and is prescribed as a treatment for ADHD in addition to amphetamine, which is Adderall. What do they call it when they prescribe it? Desoxin is the brand name for methamphetamine <laughs> and uh, Adderall is the brand name for amphetamine, and they're and wow. I've tried both drugs, both amphetamine and methamphetamine, and they're very, very similar drugs. And that's not to say that either are good or bad. It's just a, a factual statement that if in a double-blind, placebo-controlled, or not even placebo-controlled, just a double-blind trial, I don't think that I could. It could treat ADHD. Them. It could also help obese patients lose weight. Yeah. Did you know that um, there's a lot of people that think Trump is on diet pills? Oh yeah, yeah, on a diethylpropion. Yeah, right. Yeah, and that he used to be on one of the one of the elements of fin fin fen 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 oh, fen fluramine maybe. Yeah, yeah, fentermine. Well, there was a, some journalist that even talked about the Dwayne. We saved this. We have it on a folder now. What'd you say, Jamie? I've been hit up messages about that journalist that he might be compromised sketchy. or sketchy or something like that. Yeah, too. So but I don't know. but even if he were on diethylpropion or fenfluramine or fentermine or fenmetrazine or any of these substances. Yeah. So what? You well, know, the question is, is his judgment compromised because he's hopped up on speed? His judgment seems compromised regardless. But is that why? No, probably no. not. Uh, but it could be why he gets so much